and those opposed, please rise. issues. 
I support this platform wholeheartedly. I'm 110% uh, pro-life and pro-marriage. But I'll tell you what, there's a thing in the Bible called the Golden Rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And I'm standing up here before you, I put my name out, and I'm, I'm asking to be your national committee woman. So when you stand up at this podium and run for office, you get shot at sometimes. So I understand how that goes. And I don't condone what happened last night. Good many, many people stood, in, and I respect their right to disagree, but I think there's a way to do it that's respectful and a way that's not. And uh, I just don't think that that was the golden rule. Thank you very much. Okay, next we'll have uh, Captain Burton head this way, and then on deck will be uh, Cam Goodman. I have a lot of respect for. 
she's a uh, she lives in my community. We live in Delta, which is a very small place right in the middle of Alaska. And um, I thought about it, I prayed about it, I came back to the table and I said, you know, the, the differences, we all have differences. We have different gifts, talents. We bring different life experience to the table. We have different backgrounds. Every single one of us is unique by design. So when I was asked to serve, I stepped forward. There's, um, thank you. The people in this audience, we all have something very much in common. If you want to see what's important to somebody, look to see where they spend their time and their money. That's very good advice throughout your life. And every single person here has come here spending a lot of time and their own money to get here. This is the ARP, and it's important to every single one of us. Alaska, why are you here? Every one of you, picture a globe and put your hand on Alaska, your little finger there. And what you're gonna find is the freest place in the entire world. Not America, but the world. And the reason I say that is because in 1979, I got in a small sailboat and I sailed around the world. I went to 25 countries and territories. I lived with the locals. I was looking for freedom, not just to circumnavigate. I wanted to be free. I went with my husband. We came back to America looking for freedom. We found it here in Alaska. Once we sunk roots, we said we need to roll up our sleeves and start protecting and preserving. So we joined the Republican Party. Why the Republican Party? Because there's only two parties that are going to save this country, and it's going to be the Republican Party. The other one's not going to work. Why the Republican Party? Because sovereignty lies in the hands of the individual. And democracy it lies in the hands of the group. Anyways, <laughs> Republican Party. Um, next, why are we here? I think we're here for two things. You're either here for power, or you're either here for purpose. And if you're here for power, you got your foot on the gas pedal. And one of the different, the thing that the Republican Party and the uh, Democrat Party have in common is the accelerator. And we're both going the wrong direction. Because freedom, we're going up against freedom. Freedom's up on the hill, and we're going against it. Everybody think about that. It's a little seed that drops in your eyes and your heart. And then man doesn't give man freedom. Think about where it comes from. My name's Cam Hood. Go freedom. Thank all of our officer candidates did a good job uh, today. And uh, now uh, I'd like to move as the uh, co-chair for the uh, nominations committee. We don't. <laughs> we will now have the, the, the canvassing committee will distribute ballots to each district chair. Please stay in your places. The district chair will receive, will provide the information to the folks from the nominations for the uh, canvassing committee. Please stay in your places. I do not need a lot of noise and disruption. We must understand what we're doing before we can execute. The, the, okay. the district chair will disclose to the, to the uh, canvassing co committee how many people are there to vote. Those that number of ballots will be distributed to the members and then collected by the canvassing committee and they will go tally the vote. This is consistent with the operations that we have defined in the rules of the convention today. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Point of information, Greg Q, District 6. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please hold it down so I can hear the gentleman? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I know that we've asked you, uh, well, the floor has asked you several times, how do we know that if the Arab still have discrepancies and credentials that they will be seated before this vote. How do we know that? 
As far as I know, the credentials have worked. Okay. I know of no outstanding issue. I may be told about one right here, but other than that, I know of none, and I have no clue why you still have an issue, sir. Tell me. Mr. Chairman, I move to amend the credential report because there are illegal delegates seated at the convention risking our whole delegation, and I need to have discussion. Well, first I need a second on that motion. Okay. And I move to have discussion of the okay. reports. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cutler, let me ask the, the Credentials Committee to come in and amend their report. I agree that that is appropriate. And I'm looking at this. Uh, St Stephen, could you just get the Credentials Committee to come forward to amend their report? Because I know they've added at least one, probably three delegates to the list, and you're correct. Well, and I also move to have this no, no. discussion of the, of the, uh, uh we, we are going to work this issue, please. Can I finish my, can I finish my report, please? No, I, I move to have discussion of the, no, one motion at a time, simple okay. Robert's Rules of Order. We'll get the, the Credentials Committee to come in and volunteer and update the work they have just been completing. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not sure there's a clear ask request for clarification or a uh, point of order, but I, I would really feel comfortable before we vote if we can have a clarification on the discussion of the rules, the legitimacy of you know uh, national committee serving as a U.S. or running for, for a state senator and national committee at the same time. I, I feel like the rules report was uh, okay. not completed. I have no clue what you just said because you were talking over me and trying me one more time. I, I apologize. the discussion, or at least having a better understanding of the, I think we should resolve the issue of the rules and the, the rules issue was presented on the screens and discussed at reasonable length. I, I feel like the rules, the rules report got kind of shortened. Okay. We didn't vote on Let me try to resolve the issue in the simplest way for, forward. My understanding of what came out of the Rules Committee yesterday is that Mr. Seekins is eligible to, to seek this office. Position of the Rules Committee then? That is the position of the Chair, based on his understanding of what's been provided. Is it the prerogative of this body to vote on that, on that report, on that ruling? Or you can appeal the decision of the Chair. You can appeal the decision of the Chair. The Chair has ruled that the rules allow for Mr. Seekins to run. And the only thing I will add is, independent of my view of him running for this office, I absolutely wish him well to become a state senator. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, sir. My name is Kamin Gomes for this list of five. And uh, I would like you, you and the body to consider. I saw a man being accused, basically. I don't know if it's appropriate or not. I'm going to today. Forgive if I'm wrong here, but uh, I would like to hear Mr. Seekins uh, defend himself about that position. I think so. Uh, you, we have already submitted the rules for this purpose and failed once. We cannot do it again in the same meeting. Thank you very much. Uh, on the matter of the credentials, I'm just, I just moved to have a discussion of the committee results because we have several districts that have not gotten to share their reports about why their districts aren't being seated, and I move that we have a discussion of the, of the committee that results. That is not a discussion for the body, that is a discussion for the chair to have with the committee as I ordered over the last three hours. Uh, uh, district 37, but there's a whole district 38. Uh, I, just, I just moved that, the, that these. You are out of order. There are instructions on the floor to resolve the issue. Thank you very much, Mr. Weatherby. Thank you for rising. Address the chair. Williams, what it means, District 36, uh, Credentials Committee. I need Grace Jackson and Jason Copeland to come across the hall to the Dillingham. Thank you very much. Grace, thank you. Hang on a second. Let me show you. Grace Jackson and who? Jason Copeland. Grace Jackson and Jason Copeland. Go to the Credentials Room. Thank you very much. Appreciate your assistance. Uh, Northside. Mr. Chairman, uh, Peter Goldberg, Colonel West Army, Chairman District 30, uh, 26. 
six. I appealed your decision relative to the rules because we never had any discussion. The rules were on the screen for less than 15 seconds, and we never got to a discussion. Oh. 
sorry. I move to discuss the Credentials Committee results reports, and I move for districts to come to the floor to the body of uh, the delegates. I have ruled that out of order because I've instructed the districts to, who you might know of, to go to the Credentials Committee and work their problem. Thank you. At this time, I move that, I move that the districts get a chance to present their information to the body of the delegates here so that the body of the delegates here can make an important decision before adopting this temporary that is, rule. That is a request to suspend the rules. Do you make such a motion? I make a request to suspend the rules for 15 minutes for discussion. It's undebatable. We will move to the question. Those in favor indicate by rising. Is in favor of suspending the rules. Suspending the rules should be standing. Those not sure if many people are paying attention. Those that should be standing. Uh, Mr. Cutler, I assume you have four captains. At this time, and I do not want yellow paper blocking my ability to see the room down. At this time, all in favor, all opposed to suspending the rules, please stand. It's well under two thirds. The motion fails, and I urge you. I call for the vision, please. How many people wish to take this vote by standing? Vote, please stand. Take the vision by a standing vote.
from page 250, three on uh, 1.30 to page 151, 1.2. Points of order regarding the conduct of a vote must be raised immediately following the announcement of the vote results. Thank you very much. When you're now voting, does it, I mean, handle the business matter first? Does every district have ballots? Does any district not have ballots? Keep your hands up so the not so the canvassing committee can. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Okay. We will not recognize anybody as I just pointed out until the ballots have been collected. Thank you. I'm ready. 
about the beginning of my back. I do want, since the ballots have been collected, I want to recess the meeting so we can let our guests and others join us for lunch and hear the Lieutenant Governor. Thank you. Uh, well, anyway, here we are at a party convention, and a party convention is a time for renewal, rebirth, and recommitment. And like wake up in the spring, you know it can get a little muddy, and the atmosphere can get a little dusty. But however much we dust up each other, I just want to say first our renewal shouldn't come without gratitude for those who toil hard. And I want to thank Randy and Gloria, Steve Colligan, Debbie Jocelyn and Ralph Seekins, Captain Burton, and every Republican who has helped in the State Central Committee, the campaigns, the picnics and parades, the caucuses and preference polls, the fantastic network of women's clubs we have around the state and the districts. You can all be very, very proud of yourselves. Thank you. 
to welcome either icebreakers or submarines who are coming to defend our shores. And icebreakers are like fire trucks. We need them for emergencies like we had in Nome, and we need them to protect life. We stand united with the Northwest Arctic Borough, which is organizing walks uh, to try to bring awareness to our epidemic of suicide. And we all joined in walks in 100 communities or more around the state to raise awareness for the government's truth respect movement. In Sitka, I saw village public safety officers training to serve our communities. We've had snow conflicts, we've had a hurricane, we've had floods, avalanches, murders, abductions. We have moose, the Moose Federation working to keep moose off our highways and missile defense to keep hell from raining down on the sky. So for all those things I've seen our government do to protect life, I still find it incredible to believe we're also paying with our government tax dollars to take life. I was proud in January to stand on the steps of the Capitol to speak out for the unborn. And with me were fine legislators, clerics, brave mothers and fathers, daughters and sons. Now the steps of our state capitol looked straight at the courthouse. And there were defending Prop 2 for those who believe a parent shouldn't even know if a child is in surgery if that procedure is abortion. And whether the legislature up the steps behind us or the courthouse across the street, I hope we will soon recognize the civil rights of the unborn. <laughs> A baby is not an inconvenience. Inconvenient? Yes. Not an inconvenience. It is a miracle, a miracle to be defended from the time of contraception. And government's first role is to defend our rights, not to take them away. My prayer for mothers and fathers, my faith in the will of our Creator, my gratitude for my mother, who left school and eloped rather than abort a child, drive me in this cause. But civil rights and equal treatment under the law drives all of us, no matter what our faith or circumstance, and someday I believe we will respect the civil right to life and the civil right to privacy. That is why it's liberty and it is both are fundamental. Since joining our government, I've had the chance too to work on other fundamentals, supporting Alaskans in their pursuit of happiness. And that means a broad range of issues from my bitter rod to fishing rods, from wildlife to nightlife that come across the Lieutenant Governor's desk. But the compelling issue this time is filling the Alaska pipeline. I'm proud of the goal set by Sean Cornell. The goal set by Sean Cornell to reverse the trend, to attract investment, to get us to a goal of 1 million barrels a day of throughput through the Trans-Alaska Pipeline. An environmental leader asked us, how did you get to a million barrels a day? And they said, well, it's probably easier to attain than 2 million barrels a day, but we'll take that too.
that we work hard to keep Alaska competitive. You know, we also promise to push hard for Alaska resources in Washington. Now we've seen progress on CD5, that bridge across the Colville River from NPRA. We've seen progress in the we'll drilling this summer in the Beaufort and Chukchi. And that didn't come easy. One Interior Department official described it to me, alternately said, how many nasty grams is the governor going to keep sending us? Later he said, how many valentines are you going to keep sending us? I said, as many as it takes to get us access to our resources. And those nasty grams are going to keep coming. Because we have a president, ladies and gentlemen, who has a pipeline problem. The nation has heard it with Keystone. I've heard it with Puerto Rico where they can't get permits to bring in LNG to get that island off very high fuel costs. You hear it from my counterparts around the country who are challenged by the EPA on fracking and American energy independence. We had meetings this week with a representative from Massachusetts who wants to prevent us the chance to export our gas. We're trying to explain Alaska's different. So this election can do a lot here and in Juneau and in Washington to fix that pipeline problem. Our party's work will be heard this year in the U.S. Senate, in the Alaska Senate, and in the White House. And Alaskans did a great job attracting candidates here. No matter who you were for, I just want to congratulate you for doing a great job of helping to educate national leaders in our party on Alaska's uniqueness and what we have to offer the nation. Ron Paul made it up here. Yeah. I heard Rick Santorum speak for an hour about Alaska's resources and how we need to clear permitting hurdles away. Duke Gingrich kept talking about Anwar and how we're going to get American energy independence. At one point in a conversation with Michelle Bachman, I'll tell you she was so aggressive about opening Anwar, you would have thought I was the person who was against it. <laughs> and Mitt Romney sent us a letter, his son came up several times, and everybody knows that this nominee, whoever we nominate in Tampa, is going to be educated about Alaska, and we're going to be for making Alaska open for business. We're, ending, uh, we're approaching the 25th anniversary of the end of the Cold War, the war won by Ronald Reagan, fought by Alaskans from the due line to the date line, and these Republican candidates know and they respect our role in defending the country. And we're approaching the 150th anniversary of the Alaska Purchase from Russia, a purchase that was described as Seward's Folly, or Wall Russia, or the New York Sun called us a sucked orange, where the Russians took the best of Alaska's resources. But America's Republican candidates know differently. They know that Alaska's people and Alaska's resources are worth it, worth it to America, worth it to the world, and we've not been afraid to educate them when they don't know us. So let me just close by saying this. Coming into this convention, there's been a lot of talk about factions. And here, I hope we end the day with a lot of talk about unity. Because I will tell you this, we need energy in Juneau. We need you to come down and help. We need you to come help those in the battle to protect life, to help control spending, to help fill the pipeline and to fix our taxes, to help protect liberty. And we need you to help by being there. We can blame some of our circumstances on the makeup of the current Senate, but not all. Don't help us win on the facts, on the knowledge, on the principles. The whole thing is just crazy. And those of us who serve in your government, elected or not, appreciate your prayers, your calls, your questions. And I see changes for the better every day when citizens get involved. Our party's platform committee should meet regularly, not just 
uh, at the time of convention, but come down to Juno and meet around the state and remind Republicans why we're here and keep the agenda on the agenda. Our government is a republic. It's representative of the people. It is noble and then it lacks nobility. For most of human history, we've lived in either an age of savagery or an age of kings. And it's time for the people to get involved. So, we'd like to see you, Juno. Thank you very much for the work you're doing here at the convention. God bless you, and Godspeed.
are technically elephants, uh, is the division among the party, you know, as I floated around for the last couple days, you've got one person complaining about another group of people, the big divide. And I joked with Casey that what we need to do when emotions start to get really heated is have a timeout corner, and we'll just play video of Obama and Nancy Pelosi. Thank you. 